I've seen the movie. It's true. It's real. I've seen the disaster artist. Yes, I did. Oh, hi, guys. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and The Disaster Artist is one of these movies about the making of movies. But it's not just about any movie, but the one many claim to be the worst of all time. Tommy Wiseau's The Room. You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Which was released in 2003 and has since built a cult following because of its unique level of badness paired with the weird fascination for the mysterious real-life persona of Tommy Wiseau. Nobody quite knew what his actual age was or where he was from. Even his closest friends had no real clue and the disaster artist keeps the mystery alive as well. Though there are sources now that give some answers. But that doesn't change that Tommy Wiseau is one of the strangest public characters you can imagine and James Franco, who not only directed the disaster artist but also portrayed Tommy in the movie, has created both a very entertaining showcase and a sad and nuanced look on this peculiar man. The film is based on the book The Disaster Artist, My Life Inside the Room, the greatest bad movie ever made, written by Greg Sestero and Tom Bissell. Sestero was the co-star in the room and also Tommy Wiseau's best friend which he still is to this day and they actually just start together in the comedy thriller Best Friends, which I didn't see so far but actually heard good things about. Which is quite astonishing as Wiseau shows no talent for acting whatsoever in the room. It's his apparent lack of any understanding of human behavior that made his film, which he wrote, produced, directed and starred in such a cult classic. You don't have to see it to enjoy The Disaster Artist, but it certainly adds a lot of context. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. But fortunately, Franco's film is not just a love letter, which the framework narrative of some famous people at the beginning and shots of the fan reactions to the room at the end of the movie might imply. It is that for sure, and they recreated many of the most notorious scenes, including almost exact body movements and lines spoken at nearly identical timing to the original. But at its heart, it's also a story about two friends who follow their dreams, even if they don't have that much talent. Or no talent at all. It's a film about wishes and a longing to be accepted and loved. It's about narcissism, jealousy and friendship, and therefore it's something pretty much everybody can relate to, and recognize themselves in. Even if it's about such a strange individual as Tommy Wiseau and even if it's dressed as a funny comedy about some weirdos. The film begins with Wiseau and Sestero meeting for the first time and from there on it's about their dream to become famous actors in Hollywood, their struggle and then finally the making of the room and all the craziness that happens on the set, but also all the interpersonal conflict and emotions. James Franco, who already won a Golden Globe for his portrayal, is spectacular as Tommy Wiseau, looking, moving and most importantly sounding like him. And he's not playing him as a clown but quite nuanced as a real human being, no matter how crazy he might appear to other people. Greg Sestero on the other hand is played by James Franco's real brother Dave Franco, which gives the film this additional meta level. On one hand you have those two struggling actors who formed this brotherly bond who wanted to fulfill their big dreams in Hollywood and on the other hand two guys who are brothers in real life and who actually became big recognizable stars. James Franco's performance is without a doubt the absolute highlight of the disaster artist, but the rest of the cast adds a lot to the humor as well. Seth Rogen plays the script supervisor Sandy, who apparently took over the director role many times as Wiseau wasn't really able to. Josh Hutcherson is a marvel in the role of Danny in the room, a character so out of place and cringeworthy that it's just baffling to watch. And Zac Efron has a small part as well in which he can once again show that those comedic roles are really a virtue of his. Is the film completely true to what actually happened? Well, Wiseau himself said it's 99%, but I actually changed minor and also some major aspects to streamline the narrative and bring across the themes of the film in a more focused way. 
The disaster artist really shines with the performances and its two central characters Tommy and Greg. But where it lacks just a little bit was the overall filmic style. It's not really a story that needs to be told in a more extravagant filmic fashion, but it would have been cool to get a little bit more of that flavor as well. At the end of the movie there's still enough mystery surrounding Wiseau, but we also get a fascinating and surprisingly touching look at a small portion of this man's life. You don't just laugh about him, but can also feel his pain and incapability to express himself. Normally I'm not someone who is much into watching movies that are so bad they are good again and with something as The Room I find it rather sad. I mean I had a really fun time watching it and laughing at all its endless flaws and astonishing bad things, but especially in context now with The Disaster Artist, I'm not able to shake the feeling that we are watching a man who is not able to express himself and the whole world laughs about him. That shouldn't mean that Wiseau is just this poor guy, but I always have a hard time watching people like him exposing himself to such a level. But this is also the reason why I enjoyed The Disaster Artist and the recent events so much because now it seems that the story came full circle and to some kind of happy end. And while it's definitely not the way he wanted it to play out, it's kind of heartwarming and beautiful nevertheless. In German I'd say James Franco brilliert als Tommy Wiseau und schafft mit seinem Film ein höchst amüsantes, aber eben auch tragisches Porträt eines absoluten Ausnahmekünstlers. I give The Disaster Artist 8 out of 10. It's more like 7.6, but I don't do that. Alright, that's it. Like always, comment below and let me know what you think about the disaster artist. And also let me know, have you seen the room? You can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell. Thank you.